えっと雪平相馬って言いますこの学園のことは正直踏み台としか思ってないです思いがけず編入することになったんですけど、まあ、要するに入ったからにはてっぺん取るんで<笑>残念かいらっしゃいますThe two open their eyes to Elias, greeted by fairies and surrounded by weird and wonderful beings upon her arrival. These events mark the beginning of Chisei's story as the apprentice of the agent Magus. This is a masterpiece. The world of the show is full of mystery and goes into depth more than just one or two times. However, if you are a new anime watcher, I don't recommend this as a show to start with. My reason for that is that the story can be confusing and sometimes overwhelming. Some people may also find certain situations unnecessary or wrong. One, if looked upon from my standpoint, is not true. Every detail in the show means something, and I am excited to see more. At number nine, we have Kaze no Stigma. Kazume, our main male, was born into a family of fire users without that ability, and is put down and pretty much shunned by his piece of crap father, basically forcing him to leave. He had no fight with our main female character, Ayano, over family secession. Whoever wrote the description for this series appears to not even have watched it. Kazume comes back home after four years as an expert wind user and the gruesome death of his girlfriend. Kaz reunites with his younger brother, who has a big role in the series, and teams up with Ayano at the urging of her father, who is clearly trying to get them romantically involved with each other. There is plenty of action and some comedy and some pretty dark moments as well. It does have a minor bit of fan service, and Kazume is not your clique main male who has a stupid silly fit over anything sexual. So there's that. I certainly recommend it. Go ahead and give it a try. At number 8, we have Scrapped Princess. Pacifica Kasol is the most feared and hated person by the followers of the god Mazer. Known as the Scrapped Princess, she is the poison that will destroy the world. To avoid being killed by the zealots of Mazer, Pacifica and her adoptive brother and sister lead the village of Manhurin. Her brother, Shannon, is an expert with the sword while Raquel is proficient with magic. At every step of the way, however, someone is constantly trying to kill Pacifica, hoping to somehow avert the catastrophe that is supposed to befall the world on her 16th birthday. While Scrapped Princess has what can be called a traditional story, it takes some very untraditional twists and turns. There is a lot of emotion here, and we watch Pacifica buckle under the pressure of having this existence thrust upon her, being hunted down like an animal for reasons she is not even certain of. Overall, I am left with a very favorable view of this anime. A satisfying ending, great characters, I am sad to see this one end. The story feels very original and delivers a unique, cautionary tale about mankind and his struggles to not destroy himself. At number 7, we have Chrono Crusade. We open with representatives of the Magdalene Order. A religious order that hunts demons, going into action. These are our main characters. Sister Rosette and her demonic partner Chrono. We quickly learn that Rosette's younger brother, Joshua, was taken to a twisted version of Shibuya to play a Reaper's game. I mean, he was kidnapped by a demon named Ayan. To search for him, she's formed a pact with her friend Chrono, the price being her very life force. The series is excellent. In terms of writing, acting, and animation, it's really exemplary. Chrono Crusade is an outrageous story of love. And loyalty, heaven and hell, and should not be missed by anyone that wants to be moved as much as any show can move you. And who wants to experience a truly deep and meaningful storyline with wonderful and real characters? The story is really captivating and keeps the audience looking forward for the next episode. The story stays intact from the beginning until the end. 
there's almost no made up episodes which are unrelated with the actual plot. Let me reword that. Absolutely no fillers. The plot continues its pace throughout the anime, and the ending is very, very sad. So be prepared. At number 6 we have Oregaru. Now, the story centers around Hikigai Hachiman, a high school student who is shunned by pretty much the whole school. Luckily, this suits him perfectly as he prefers to be a loner and doesn't want to make friends. But his happy life soon crumbles as his teacher forces him to join a club which is supposed to help people with their problems. Even worse, the club also has a smart and beautiful ice-cold beauty, Yukino Yukinoshita, nicknamed that for a cold personality. Hilarity ensues. Now the story basically revolves on the club helping out on people's requests and problems. Although the problems are simple, the way the main character solved the problem isn't. The comedy usually revolves around Hachiman and Yukino's witty dialogue and sarcasm. Which is really funny by the way. How do you feel, or how did you feel when you entered your high school every morning? Were you greeted by an accumulation of friends? Did the girls all swarm and fawn over you for what you did? Were you always the popular kid? No? Ah, me neither. And that's why I enjoy this anime. At number 5 we have Wolf's Reign. Set in a distant future, the world is falling apart. Most humans don't seem to notice anything that's going on outside of the cities they live in, just slowly working themselves into the ground it appears. The end of the world is near. A lone wolf named Kiba finds himself drawn by an intoxicating scent to Free City, an impoverished town under the rule of the callous lord Orkham. Here, Kiba discovers that wolves Hige, Sume, and Tobo have been drawn in by the same aroma. By following the fragrance of lunar flowers, said to be the key to opening the door to their ideal world, the wolves set off on a journey across desolate landscapes and crumbling cities to find their legendary promised land. However, they are not the only ones seeking paradise, and those with more sinister intentions will do anything in their power to reach it first. The plot of Wolf's Reign is amazing, and is an amazing take on the classic story of good versus evil. I don't want to give much away here, it's worth it to watch all the way through. At number 4 we have Trigun. The story follows our protagonist Vash who is known as the terrifying gunman with a 60 trillion dollar bounty on his head. The story is laid out as an episodic adventure where each one or two episodes brings about a different story involving certain trials and hardships the characters get to experience. The good thing about this series is that each adventure is nicely linked to the next so there is a form of progression and development but this all changes later on in the series where a major plot twist and it becomes clear that this is an adventure with purpose. Overall, Trigun on the surface may seem like your typical bang bang shoot up, but this actually has a very deep story that will make you feel differently about life. Even though there are a lot of characters throughout the series, there are quite a few memorable ones and plenty of memorable moments in the series. This anime did so well in both comedy and drama areas, which makes this highly entertaining to watch. At number 3 we have Blade of the Immortal. The story is about an immortal samurai and a girl whose family was killed by a different dojo. The girl goes looking for the immortal samurai so she can ask for his help to kill the people that killed her family. This was a great show. It started out rough. I didn't like the first three episodes that much, but I was drawn to the character and the concept, so I stuck with it. I like the more adult violent stuff, and this has an immortal wisecracking samurai. What's not to love? I couldn't be any happier about my decision to stick with the show, more so than how I feel today having watched the finale. That was excellent. I never thought I'd ever say this. Go watch the live action movie of this anime. At number 2 we have The Rising of the Shield Hero. Now you might not be surprised that I have put this anime on the list, because you all know this anime and nearly everybody has watched it. The Rising of the Shield Hero is the most popular in this list. By the way, I didn't want to put this anime on the list, but because of its storyline, I didn't have any choice but to put it on here. You all know that hero was summoned to another world as the legendary hero with some other heroes. Because he was a shield hero, Naofumi is belittled and ridiculed by his fellow heroes and the kingdom's people due to his weak offensive capabilities and lackluster personality. When the heroes are provided with resources and comrades to train him, Naofumi sets out with the only person willing to train alongside him. Multi male remark, he is soon betrayed by this bitch. Naofumi then becomes heavily discriminated against and hated by the people of Melwarmark for something he didn't even do. With a raging storm of hurt and mistrust in his heart, Naofumi begins his journey of strengthening himself and his reputation. I think I don't need to say any more, so go ahead and watch it if you haven't already. Now coming in in first place we have the Great Teacher Onizuka. Ah, the Great Teacher Onizuka. <laughs> what a great teacher he is. A really original and good anime filled with comedy, action, and a few serious moments. 
an animation that has given life to one of the most memorable characters I've ever seen. The story of GTO concerns Aikichi Onizuka, a reformed biker gang leader that strives to be a great teacher in Meets Chicks. The story of the teacher that reforms delinquents has been done countless times, but the story of GTO feels fresh. For one, instead of taking place in a lower class public school district, the students are of a higher class with wealthy parents, and Onizuka doesn't come from the same privileged and sophisticated background as his students. And this provides an interesting comedic dynamic. The story has a few heartfelt moments that scattered throughout the show, and the only complaint I have with this very story is that it began to feel repetitive near the end with the same Onizuka wants to turn students' life around, but students hate Onizuka. This formula being used over and over again, but although, I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. By the way, before you go, please like and subscribe to the channel, and if you want to support my work, then become a Patreon. There is a link down below. This is goodbye until I catch you up with another video.